It was all meant to be, actually. I was in a film with Rod Steiger. I was Tiana Karate Princess, and I was invited to the Moscow Film Festival because Rod Steiger had been in Dr. Zhivago, so you know, he was big news, so I sort of was able to ride that. And when I arrived in Moscow, they had a, there was a little postcard about a Vietnamese movie showing at 8 a.m. the next day. And, you know, we were jet lagged out of our minds. But my husband and I said, a film from Vietnam, they're making movies? I mean, we thought, you know, it's Rambo country. They're, they're, they're killing people. They're killing our POWs. There were all these MIAs. You know, we lived under this whole, all these Hollywood movies. And, and we were really afraid to go back. And, and we rushed to see the film. And we met the head of Vietnam cinema. He had a wooden leg. And, and it was a, an American bomb at Dinh Binh Phu. Well, what American bomb at the, the Great Battle of Dinh Binh Phu ended in 1954? Americans in Vietnam, it turned out that the U.S. government funded the French war to win back French colonialism. And the odyssey began. I became obsessed. I, I became a, a student of history. I had to meet my father's history teacher, General Jab. He's a communist. I'm a daughter of the most staunch anti-communist family. And I, there was no way to see him because all the journalists at the uh, embassy, the only place to go was the Australian embassy in Hanoi in the late 80s. And it, just to meet someone who speak English, just to find some heat, it was freezing cold. The journalist told me General Jab was dead. And I somehow just thought, I would have heard about this, you know. Even before the days of Google, I thought, no, he's not dead. Um, but these journalists from, they were big, you know, big papers. Um, gosh, uh, I mean, Paris Match, uh, the Australian Times, I mean, the New York Times, they, they were all there sitting at the bar telling me everyone had died. It turned out that the communist leaders weren't seeing anybody. They, re they the communist leaders denied access. They, they didn't want to be interviewed for whatever reason for the previous years, but they had just opened up that year, unbeknownst to me and to these journalists. They had just opened up. It was called, it was called Domai. And uh, Domai, the, the, the new change. And so I guess timing is everything, and there I was, and people were desperately poor. And I was told, no, you're not even a journalist. You have no credentials. And he's not even seeing journalists. You cannot see General Jap, our hero. You know, who are you? And I said, I was born here. He taught my father history. And can I write him a poem? And that perked up. Somebody senior at the Ministry of Information the press department of Hanoi said, she wants to write a poem? Let her write a poem. And that night I thought, dear America, dear Vietnam, new dawn of understanding. There was so much misunderstanding on both sides, and the war divided all our families. So I wrote this in English, of course. I, I didn't read or write Vietnamese very well, and I submitted it. They asked someone to translate it, and it was Ho Chi Minh's disciple, Vu Ki, who was, who, who was a poet and loved poetry. Ho Chi Minh was a poet, and he had it translated, and I got a call. I was at the Metropole Hotel. The phones didn't work, nothing worked. The telex machines were just standing there, dusty, nothing worked. And, and I got a call from this old Russian phone. The phone rang, out. you know, it wasn't working, but it rang. And this man said, I am the general, and when would you like to meet? And, and I thought I recognized the voice of one of the guys in the press department. And I thought it was a joke, and I said, very funny. I said, you know, and I, you know, something like, Nice try, but you know, come on. And um, and the voice said, he he said, 
so I said Yamdok, as in director of press. I thought this was the director of press. I said Yamdok. So the voice said, no, I am not the director. I am the general. I hear you're the director. Something made me stop. And then I heard a click. And then I thought, now the phone rings again, and it was the press department. And they said, you hung up on General Jap? And I said, I hung up? I think somebody hung up on me. They said, that was General Jap, and he wants to meet you. And I, uh, so it's all recorded. We had 16 millimeter film. And that was the beginning of a friendship that lasted over two decades.